A very good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. I am happy to welcome you to a brand new webinar series, the second episode of its kind, titled Beyond Court Practice. This webinar is the 154th BASL webinar and is part of the fifth webinar series. The webinars are conducted on the Zoom platform, and for those who have been unable to register on Zoom, could also join by watching the live stream on the BSL YouTube channel. These webinar series are organized by the Seminars Committee of the BASL, Chairman of the Seminars Committee and Secretary BASL, Mr. Rajiv Amarasurya, whose brainchild the BASL webinar series is, Convener of the Seminars Committee, Assistant Secretary BASL, Mr. Pasin the Silva, and the co-conveners, Mr. Pandulavanya Rachi, Mr. Ushan Uberatna, Ms. Anne Devananda, and Ms. Nikini Mapitigama. I would also take this opportunity to thank the President of the BASL, Mr. Salia Peris, President's Council, and the other members of the Management Committee of the BASL for all the support and guidance. In today's episode of Beyond Court Practice, we have with us an esteemed guest whose career expands beyond the legal sphere. She is none other than Mrs. Varani Amunagama Fernando, Attorney at Law, and interviewed by Mr. Chanakya Jayadeva, Attorney at Law. Without any further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Jayadeva to take over. Over to you, sir. Okay, right. Uh, thank you, uh, Shani, for the introduction. Sorry about this uh, slam slight uh, uh, streaming difficulties we are all experiencing these days. Uh, there are power cuts everywhere and uh, and and different circumstances. But uh, yes, welcome again for the fifty fourth uh, of the one hundred fifty fourth of the webinar series of the BSL uh, webinar series, which is targeted at continuing legal education and continuing professional development. Um, as you heard in the introduction, uh, my guest today is Varuni Amnugama. He's no stranger to any of you, a very famous name. Varuni Amnugama Fernando is the co-founder of Triads uh, Limited, which is a one of the uh, flagship uh, advertising companies, and also uh, the Derna Media Network, which owns uh, which is, uh, number one a channel in Sri Lanka. And she's also a director of Citrus Leisure PLC, H3 Foods PLC, and George Stewart's group. And it's only my pleasure to welcome you, uh, Varuni. Varuni, thank you for taking your time off your busy schedule and joining us today. How are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah. Thanks um, for the invitation, Chanakya. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's nice to have you. Uh, as you would know, you heard from the interactions and uh, and and previous discussions we had. Uh, our idea only showcasing people who are successful, people like you and others uh, who have come from an initial background or, or initial uh, training and academic qualification of law. For some reason, um, took a different path. Unlike us. Uh, you did not go into practicing, you did not go to court, uh, probably maybe once or twice, and you took into the line of business. Um, before we go into delving deep at, as to, as to the, the experiences and other things, tell me what, at what point you, you entered the law faculty of uh, Colombo and uh, you're studying law. At what point did it occur to you, okay, I'll take a different path than what I'm trained for? How did it happen? Okay, first, uh, let me thank Rajiv and the team and also you, Chanakya, for, you know, doing all the great things that you guys are doing to inspire the younger generation of legal eagles. And uh, I have to be honest, um, I, this is the first webinar that I'm doing because I was never comfortable to do a webinar. I, I'm a very touchy-feely kind of 
uh, very interactive person. So I like to see the expressions of the people who I'm speaking to. So I'm usually more comfortable if I speak to an audience. But given yeah. the constraints of this post pandemic era, I guess we have to make the best of the technologies that we have. Yeah. So anyway, I'm really happy to be part of this uh, webinar program. And yeah. um, before we start, also, I have to say I watched yesterday's Deepthi's um, interview and it was awesome. Deepthi is a dear friend and I was really uh, happy to hear his story in that way and the way you conducted the interview. So thank you. And thank you also for that grand introduction. Uh, one correction in the word, you said uh, well known, I think it's more like notorious. So the one little correction on the introduction. Um, but going back to your uh, question, Chanakya, yes, actually, I entered the law faculty in, I did my A-levels in 1987 and entered the law faculty actually um, in 1989. I think even Deepthi mentioned this. I think it's very important since we have a very youthful audience, uh, the reason for that gap. You know, we lost two years of our life, actually, the best part of our life, because there was a JVP insurrection. And that is something very unforgivable, because although political, I think the youth of today sometimes do not realize the danger in such uh, extreme thinking. Anyway, it was during that time that uh, I worked in an advertising company. It was a leading company at that time. It was Phoenix Advertising, led by Mr. Irvin Virakodi. It was a local agency at that time. Of course, now they've evolved into a multinational agency called Phoenix, Ogilvy and Mather. So those two years of working, after my year levels, before going into the university, kind of gave me a grounding on what business, the business life or what business can do, especially what communication can do in a person's life. So I got a certain grounding and understood how to start a business. But I didn't think much about it when university started in 1989. There were two batches, 88 and 89, um, joined the law faculty. But um, I remember Deepthi saying, you know, he was uh, very focused on doing law and all of that. To be honest, I had uh, no such inclinations. I just wanted to get a university degree. And that also is an interesting story because when I was doing my A-levels, um, at one point, I wanted to just say, no, I can't do this. You know, this is too much. I don't want to do it. I don't want to go into the university, all these stories. And my father, who was a great influence in my life, um, he looked at me quite coolly and he said, that's okay, Puta. I mean, if, if you don't have what it takes, it's all right. You know, you can always do what you want to do. Uh, you don't necessarily need to be a graduate. I'm a graduate. Your mother is a graduate and so is your sister. But if, if you're that one person who doesn't want to be that, it's okay. So that reverse psychology actually pushed me to really, you know, study hard and get better results and somehow get into the law faculty. Why the law faculty? Um, I think it was again connected to employability. It was always seen as, okay, once you pass, once you graduate, you could be a law, an attorney at law, of course, after going to the law college. And it was really job oriented. So um, that's how I went to the law faculty. But I have to be honest, um, more than the studying part of it, I was more interested in the extracurricular activities at the law faculty. Uh, I was involved in the university political arena because my, my um, interest at that time, because I felt that I represented the English medium in the law faculty and there was nobody really involved in the university politics at that time from our uh, medium. So I kind of, I, I didn't understand why, because I thought we all had to make certain decisions for the benefit of the student community. So I got involved in politics and um, of course, meeting people from different, different parts of the country, uh, different walks of life, different interests. That was really more interesting than uh, studying the law, so to speak. So in our third year uh, was when this thought, propped up, but 
really what began before that, because I had a grounding in uh, advertising, a friend of mine, a girl called Ishini Vikram Singh, a very dear friend even now, we started a very small um, hobby. You know, we used to uh, make our own cards, write creative things, and, you know, get involved in uh, certain creative ideating. So this gave rise to us uh, of thinking, we got an opportunity at that time through her uncle, who worked for Central Finance at that time, who they were doing uh, a new advertising campaign. And then, uh, of course, he said, okay, you all are, you know, still green and uh, you know wet behind your ears you don't you're talking about being creative but you haven't proven yourself why don't you give some ideas so um, that kind of started us thinking and at that time there was a colleague of mine I think he's more famous and notorious than I am Billy Jayaveda who was a batchmate of mine he had an inherent creative creative ability because whether it was the Freshers welcome, whether it was printing uh, exam papers, whether it was uh, writing a bitti puat pata, whatever, there was a unique creative element embedded in what he was doing. So I, from the start, I think one of my biggest strengths is understanding my weaknesses. So I always felt that um, it was good if we could work as a team because each of us had different skills. So just oh, not very seriously, we spoke about, okay, why don't we formalize and this and, you know, uh, form an advertising company. So really the business thinking, I have to be honest, came from Dilip. Um, and together, Triad was the name of the company we formed in the third year of the um, law faculty. And Triad means a powerful threesome because there was Dilip, there was Ishini and I. So we formed this uh, limited liability company. And, um, you know, our whole position, what we wanted to do at that time, really, Chanakya was, we looked around and we found that the six top most advertising agencies at that time were multinational agencies. And we felt that we had a role to play if we catered to the local audiences because there were very, very, very good local brands who were competing with multinational brands, but who did not really understand the value of marketing, advertising or brand positioning. So we felt with our knowledge or with, with our creative kind of uh, blood running in our veins that we could work with these local brands and be partners in actually uh, making these brands very very strong so that is really how it was an accident so in one word my whole career if you take the business career has been an accident <laughs> yeah that's that's very nice to hear because um a lot of people plan, uh, one, as, 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 as we, we discussed previously, a lot of people plan when they do a law career because we are targeting this to the, our younger generation people who are either studying or who just passed out or in the first four years of practicing what they want to know. Uh, they, don't, uh, they, don't, they don't have a plan beyond the academic uh, precedents that have been taught. Okay, you have to be a practicing lawyer. You have to be a... Uh, Uh, either a court practitioner or a deed lawyer or a boardroom lawyer, as they call it. That means a company lawyer, something like that. So uh, before I come to the company law, things like that, I remember you told me something that uh, there's a group of students in your law faculty uh, who got together and thought about this. Is, is it the three of you or is it, the, is, it, is it other people got together and thought about making a localized branding on advertising? How was that? Because that is uh, innovative, entrepreneurial, kind of a thinking out of the box coming out of law faculty i can imagine it's coming out of a media faculty or arts faculty or you know something else but here you are trained in a different way but you thought about this how did that happen um can you a little bit on that? yeah actually it was the three of us who thought about it but if you take the law faculty the lawyers were dilith and i um i think you know if you take lawyers per se um they are left brain, you know, because lawyers are organized, they are very analytical and uh, very structured in their thinking. So, but there again, there are some others like me, like Dilith, a lot of people from the arts 
stream who come into the law faculty who are right brain who are always wanting to do something different something creative something even chaotic mm. you know so we belong to that so mm. somehow this rigidness of studying law was not very in, enticing to us we right. felt that okay challenging convention uh bringing new ideas um you know using powerful communication messages to make the mindset of the sri lankan people better or more positive you know things like that were um interesting to us so that's why we felt okay rather than go the straight and narrow why don't we pick something interesting exciting and you know enjoy your lives because there was a lot of happiness in that setup of course having said that i must mention now there are many lawyers many 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 uh, successful attorneys who are actually middle brain right now i mean they now a very good friend of mine he may be even logged on mr mohan virakon the president's counsel very recently was telling me how he applies creativity to his defense you know he carves out his own way although the legal principles and everything are there he brings his own input his own narrative you know so you uh, lawyers can be middle brain also but what happened to us at that young stage was we opted to be right brain give flight to our creativity and we felt law at that time might have been restrictive so that is the reason why we chose that creative field but at no point in time chanakya that's why it seems this is really for the legal fraternity especially the younger people do you have to choose right because even if yeah. you have another career path yeah. you can my, my question a minute from that is yes because yeah yeah because i just i just wanted to give an example of a colleague of mine like now sanka amrajit who's on derana you see him on derana news he's an attorney right mm. Mm. but he's also a news presenter yeah so if mm. you're a student of law or an attorney at law or if you're a human being who likes to you know use both sides of your brain or be middle brain then you can multitask just because you study yeah. law so, doesn't mean you have to only yeah. that yeah so emanating from that uh, um, um worry so now you guys did this start up this whole thing because uh, uh because you you all you all you all you all, you all had your like you said left brain that kind of a thinking but even people who are just uh, wanting to follow that and agreeing to follow the law course and get good degrees and all that you for the, the for the benefit of the young young crowd it's okay to break away take a challenge and try something other than law uh because you may succeed you never know they of course is that you don't know where your talents are until you experiment exactly. until you try it out try it out you don't know so would you recommend to all the people coming out of law okay try out something that you may have thought you don't necessarily have to be creative to or like you guys no everybody is creative what i'm saying is there might be certain yeah. things that you'd like to do certain vocations which make you happy for example it may yeah. be cook it may be cooking right now today in this post pandemic age you can create your own brand or maybe butter cookies i don't know whatever if you like cooking right that doesn't mean you have to stop being a lawyer mm. you the more things you do with your life more fulfilling it will be so for yeah. now for example janakya for us actually studying law this law degree pattam the llb mm. pattam was very helpful because when we started mm. out actually canvassing for work now if we when we just called not many clients were willing to give us any time of day leave alone an appointment but no sooner you introduce yourself as an llb or a attorney at law they give you a second glance they trust you more and they are curious they are wanting okay now somebody is coming up with a communication idea or a advertising proposal but that person is actually of a law background 
So then they are curious, so they give you, they open the door to get your business because there is a lot of trust that comes with this degree that we have got or the qualification that we have got. Right. Okay. Now, what do you have to say for now? There are a lot of people who come into the business areas like you, you have people working under you who come legal part of the business institutions, right? And I threw this question to uh, my previous guest, uh, Deepthi, as well. Now, um, and they don't realize uh, that although they are in a corporate culture, uh, that they, their job is only to do law and they maximum will end up in a uh, maybe bigger firm or than the firm they started with or as a legal director, right? But while starting as a lawyer, you can also graduate or migrate rather to being a business per se, as a person per se. So what is your, what have you got to say for people like that who are thinking of coming into law areas in, 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 uh, in private companies only you to know, do the law? Yeah, uh, what I have found Chanakya when they apply for a job, yeah. they already make up their minds thinking, okay, we are going to this department. Yeah. And they think, their career path ends as, as the department head. But in the business arena, there are many, many ladders, many, many steps to the ladder. Oh. Right? I remember even deep, they said this, even the CEO of the company can have a legal background and I mean, and do very well. Now, my really good friend, if you take Aruni, Aruni Gunatilaka, she's the chairperson of HNB. Yeah. And she has a legal background and she, she's, she's just been a banker. So sky is the limit because especially if you've studied law, that's what I found not only with us, by and large, it is an amazing starting point. Then your whole life opens up opportunities, many opportunities open up in front of you. And you can, you can start in that little legal department, but then move on to any department after that or any, any, any uh, um, uh, they, uh, say the job opportunity that arises in that organization or in, in, in any industry gives you that capability. But one thing is important, Chanakya. Just because you're educated, that doesn't give you knowledge. You have to be curious enough. Now, if you're interested, for example, in the tea industry, you go into the legal, the legal department, but as a curious young person, you might want to do tea tasting. Correct. You might want to get involved in the pack designing. Mm -hmm. You might want to find out, okay, how do you do the pricing? Mm -hmm. So that curiosity makes you a very holistic person. Mm -hmm. That makes you a very, very attractive, um, you know, team member into that organization. Mm -hmm. So it is a very individual thing. As long as somebody has an open mind, be curious gather as much knowledge as possible, not only in that little uh, narrow sphere that you studied, mm. but from the environment. Then sky is the limit. You know, there are so many opportunities that you can go on. You, you touched upon a very important point, which is going to be very important to our, uh, our, our, our younger audience, who's our target audience. Um, also, uh, you may sound, I may sound, I'm putting the same questions to all the guests because I want a different opinion. Now, you said, yes, don't limit yourself to law if you want to be in this thing. You, you gather other knowledge. Now, in the process, in, in order to gather other knowledge, do you recommend or do you think they have to do other kinds of courses, um, like we'll say, coming from law and then you want to integrate into a commercial business? Should they uh, subsequently, even while working, you can do a lot of courses, you know, yeah. do, uh, we'll say, marketing or SIMA or accountancy or B MBAs. Uh, do they play a role? Or can somebody without uh, another spending time on a, on a on a piece of paper, I'm asking that for two reasons, can be a self-made man. You know what I mean is by uh, read up yourself. And uh, as you know, a lot of business people are self-made people, not people with degrees and or they are Harvard dropouts, right? Not not uh, uh, Harvard uh, the PhD holders. Most of them, they are up them as well. So why I'm asking that is, in, we'll take your company, for example, if your company is TV Derana or, or Leisure or Foods or Triads, if you say a lawyer comes in and start a job in something, <laughs> when you're thinking of promoting him or her, will you look at her performance 
and the knowledge he or she has got, irrespective of the way they have got? Or would you look into those styles? Okay, uh, so and so, um, LLB starting, are uh, now MBA, SIMA, SIM, all that. How do you assess as a director when you are promoted? Actually, actually Chanakya, I will look at both. That mm. educational qualification will show me a certain amount of discipline. Okay. Right? But to me, I'm a very pragmatic person. I prefer practicality to book learning. While, okay. yes, that will give me some grounding. Most important thing to me will be attitude. Okay. If, yeah, beyond anything else, if that okay. person has an attitude, humble, to be humble, want to learn, team, to be a team player, okay. and also to have very confident leadership qualities. And by that, I had to be very specific, especially in our advertising company, which we started. Now we have about 150 young people. They are Chanakya. Mm -hmm. Language is not a barrier. Mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. our, in our company, actually, most of the creativity is thought of, dreamt of, and created in Singhala. Mm -hmm. Predominantly Singhala, then comes Tamil to talk mm. into that audience because a typically English speaking audience doesn't exist in our country. Mm. They are either Singhala or Tamil. That's true, no? yeah, we have, yeah. our, our, our national language is not yeah. English. So English our, becomes yeah. almost, yes, you think of certain ideas in English, but on the most part, they're translations. Yeah. So this exactly. lot of people, young, young people think, okay, English could be a barrier. Yeah. English is a universal language, no? So you must learn it for your own competence and confidence. Mm. Not ara khadda hari ek pavichikal la kavari me kapala da nene me kadu pavichikal, right? This is for your own self confidence. You must learn, but it will never be a barrier in our organization. But to me, it will be a barrier if that person has an attitude. If that person is arrogant, define attitude, define attitude. What do you attitude, mean by that? positive attitude, negative attitude? Yeah, attitude to me means positive thinking. Mm -hmm. If somebody can see something, or we say you go into a room, there are some people who immediately pick up on the good things. This room is bright. Oh, wow, there are books to read. There are some people, they're wired that way. They immediately see the negativity. Are you there is some a speck of dust? You know that you wouldn't want you wouldn't want the latter category no, in your no, organization. No, no, I detest that negativity because I think it that doesn't that doesn't contribute to you or the company or your life or anything like or that. That person, yes, and you know that kind of negative thinker actually can be a virus to an organization. The from and the time, said, time okay. yeah. You said wow. now I'm looking at it at an angle of a young person of a few years practice, trying to be in the corporate thing, like following your advice and DPs and others' advice. Now you said that you look at both, no, and the attitude, you look at both the qualification and the acquired skills, self-acquired. Yeah. We'll say somebody has been performing in your company or has come, who are performing in other companies joined you, who has we say a law again, obviously lawyer, two, three years, but brilliantly done the work. We'll say five years, but no MBA, no SIMA, no SIM, no nothing, no, nothing like that. Right? Attitude also is okay. Right? And then there, there are about five other people who are having similar uh, experiences, uh, not, done, not done anything necessarily to dazzle you, but qualifications also. Now, whom would you go for? Actually, I will test all of them. No, only one position is available in vacancy. Yeah, but we can, we can give them an internship. Ah, you take on that. Yeah, for say three months. Yeah. And within that time, we can see who's suitable and they can see whether they like that position. So there is always that opportunity. But I must be honest with regards to my own self. This is a very personal thing. If there are five people, I would always give preference to somebody who's outside of Colombo. Because I think they deserve that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Then I will also see, okay, what what other extracurricular activities have they been involved in? Have they done a team sport? Are they generous? You know, are they people who in their free time go and probably help other people, you know, uh, freely 
you know, entertain other people and, you know, but packet teka kuna chana ke now I see this in a canteen, right? One, the, each one brings a but packet. But say there are five friends, all five eat one but packet. Then all five eat the second but packet. Right? It's an amazing Sri Lankan youth phenomenon. Yeah. All five bring bath packets, but each they together finish each bath packet. Yeah. What do you gather out of that? It's that community feeling. It's community. the fact that it's the sharing. You know, they, that is what human beings should be. You know, we trust each other. Uh, we share with each other. It is that the family. What is the strength of this country or the Asian region is our family ties. That is what they're trying to build in their working environment. And it is very interesting. From the time we started our company, we had a very unique culture. We call it the api culture. Oh. Right? So, Adata Chanakyan may podiata patangata this agency, which started with actually just three people. Now, the whole group has about 4,500. Right? And obviously, they're extended family. But oh. that one uniqueness is that api culture where everybody matters and it's not just some you know uh, western concept we had plucked off from some uh, textbook it is a very living breathing spirit that i'm talking about there was a research done in the uh, in another country and uh, one of the things it, it said among other things is that uh, uh, this is about lawyers integrating lawyers into uh, corporate culture that if you take lawyers who are too much practice, now this is the other side of the point, mm -hmm. too much practice in law firms or law as private lawyers or whatever, uh, they might be too rigid uh, to become integrated into a commercial type of thinking. Uh, now, that is, uh, that is one, one side of the point. Uh, first of all, do you agree with that kind of a thing? Have you experienced, have you had to like interview and take in for a commercial job who's only a legal background? And did you find that that person was too stiff or something like that? No, in, in our in our particular industry, not yeah. only not, not, not only legal background, even financial background yeah. is an issue because we are into uh, marketing creativity. What we sell is creative ideas. So... No sooner a financial constraint and structuring comes into place, legality comes into place, that creative idea gets restricted on the most part. So anybody who join, it depends on the field that they join, right? Whichever field, now say a, a, you join a legal department in a communication or a media company like there, and you work in a legal department, let's say. What I have actually found in real life is it's a living, breathing environment. No chanaka. They don't they don't live in a little silo or a cell. Yeah. They interact yeah. continuously. So then their whole being transforms. Mm. They begin to understand the industry they are in. Mm. They begin to understand how to apply their knowledge mm. and their skills. So they become very, very well honed lawyers. Oh. Yes, the principles are in place, but application mm -hmm. is what changes. So the yeah. young people who yeah. join these companies, right, different companies, yeah. they also need to be open-minded is my point of view. Another negative, a slightly negative example, which I saw was in actually a very big corporate, the legal department, they are very ready for any any problem or situation to seek the opinion of an outside consult or a consultant or a senior. Yeah. Right? If a problem arises for the company, immediately they seek an opinion for a fee. Mm. Uh, quite a high fee. Mm. So that to me is really not doing your job because you're not being um, uh, strong and you're not being uh, confident enough. You know, uh, I, can I can I butt in there? I mean, maybe maybe as uh, I have seen this happening and this complaint coming, because if you look at in other countries, you have a thing called in-house counsel. You call it a legal officer here, mm -hmm. which is wrong word. In-house counsel is a counsel who works. And as you know, you can't go to the heart doctor and get treated even for the stomach. Yeah. He will say go to gastroenterologist. It is that specialized in medical field. And as you would know as a lawyer, 
every area is specialized i have certain specialties entertainment law media law IT, ip but if somebody comes and say there's a ship issue i don't know anything on that right so like that is specialized so i believe uh, a lawyer whom you take in unless you take in specifically expert on that entire industry that even even if it is expert industry expert in that industry you will run into a question which does not cover your industry. Now, your industry, creative industry, probably intellectual property, labor rights, entertainment law rights, all that. So unless you take somebody like that, and then otherwise, uh, if you take a normal person who is not specialized, or she will be able to guide you through the whole process in the initial nitty gritties, but not specialized thing. I, my view as opposed to your view would be that a specialized, seeking specialized opinion from specialized counsel, which are senior independent practitioners, would be good because no no Chanakya, I totally agree. That's not what you meant. No, as and when those unique cases arise, yes. 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 But most often the issues that come are which are related to a company hmm. are company related issues, no company law issues, no. Hmm. Right, those practices are what I'm talking about, which the legal department has to handle. The documentation, whether it is going into a contract, whether it is about taxation or whether it is about employment, those. Of course, when it comes to highly specialized opinions, most certainly you have to take in those. Uh, so so that, that brings up me on to a very important, uh, I think you, you, you uh, brought it to a very important position. I think a very good advice to the young lawyers since our our idea is to educate them through this, is that, okay, before you go into, uh, see whether I, I, I am getting it correct, before you go into a particular industry's corporate culture as a lawyer, uh, at least get the grasp of the basics law that that company will need to know uh, so that you can perform better as in-house counsel. Is that what 100%, you're saying? 100% that. Yeah. So that for everything you don't run out, or you know you want so I think that's, that's a good point for all the uh, young lawyers Watch whatever that. industry that in, you're interested in or you get involved in you can always read up you can always refer you can always go and consult a senior you can gather that knowledge because that is your will right that is your own uh, confidence hmm. so that that i think will really make you a very valuable person hmm. on the team yeah now um you have you are in about four or five industries uh, mainly advertising and then you uh, television uh, and television news channel then you're also in uh, i think the leisure food mm -hmm. and pharmaceuticals uh, what would you say uh, again we are, i'm ringing on the fact that not going as legal officers going into integrate like deep did it and like you did mm -hmm. the business per se you know out of these industries Will there be opening for lawyers uh, other than, you know, you say you go with a LLB card, you know, visiting card, you take taken more seriously. Uh, presently, are there actual opportunities opening? I know subject to the pandemic limitations or we'll say in a year's time in this world turns back to normal. Will there actually be opportunities in any of those areas? If so, which area is more promising? Is it food? It is leisure. I mean, talking Sri Lanka, leisure or is it your media industry? Is it your advertising or what? No, all of it. All of it. All, all industries. So much so, Chanakya, now we are looking, we are identifying key people who can mm. come on the boards of our companies at very senior oh. levels, right? Oh, really? So that board member we identify oh. can definitely have a legal background, which will be very, very useful in taking certain informed management decisions. Right, which can move the company to the next level. Mm -hmm. So that legal, somebody with the proper legal exposure, background and knowledge mm -hmm. has so many opportunities. So, I mean, their involvement, whether it is communication, whether it is food, whatever, it doesn't matter what the industry is. All these industries need legal input. Mm -hmm. So whether you're starting at a very junior um, you know, legal counsel or you're le heading the legal department in the bigger firms or your, uh, say, non-executive director on a listed company, let's say, your legal background will definitely uh, stand you in, you know, it will hold you in good stead.
it will be very very useful because the rest of the team members would not have the knowledge or exposure that you have had mm. or even the experience mm. so as i said this uh, team involvement is important for growth mm. so your unique contribution will enhance that the entire director board yeah other question is now <laughs> Whether you, uh, which area of these three? I, I call lawyers two types of lawyers: boardroom lawyer and courtroom lawyer. Boardroom lawyer is the person who have been, you know, probably been a law firm or as a legal officer doing the paperwork of like the things you expect, tax, company secretary, all that. Courtroom lawyer is the counsel, basically who goes to court. Uh, if so, if a viewer of us, young a lawyer who's watching this, uh, want to know, want to get some experience, we'll say like you out of the college. But he or she doesn't have a vision, but wants to get into, uh, we'll say, a uh, little later, right? Okay, I'll try. Um, the, uh, I, I watched uh, the um, um, Varunese interview, but let me uh, put it on the back burner for a while and get some experience in the law per se. If so, if that person's back of the mind is to come later to business, which of these experience would be more beneficial? Is it being in a law firm or doing those, uh, what should I say, secretarial, company secretarial work, that kind of work, deed work, law firm work? Or is it arguing in court? Or is it both? Definitely the company law. In a business okay. perspective. Uh -huh. Definitely the company law will be more useful. Uh -huh. Because, I mean, that is going to be helpful in the business environment. But while you're talking about it, I another thought, uh, interesting incident came to my mind about kids who join and then move on to this field. But we spoke about before a specific yeah. incident. In our advertising company, there was a young creative writer. Okay, Nigel Walters was his name. Very clever young writer. He had absolutely no uh, uh, interest in studying law or anything like that. He was a creative writer. Yeah. Then on his own, he wanted to study. He did his LLB. He became an attorney at law. And today he's doing brilliantly well in ages department. Yeah. Right? So that is the reverse aspect of what we are talking about. We missed talk about it before. Now, most of the young kids, they study and they come into the, into the business world. No? Mm. These are people who are already in a certain job in the business field. And then they see the value of going into the legal field. And they are, you know why he chose law? Because he can write well and he can speak well. So he chose to be a counsel. Right. Now... If you see my backdrop, you can see the Lelungkulna, which is the symbol of communication. The reason I chose this backdrop is because when we were having pre-discussions, you said, uh, I think Rajiv or somebody else, you said that you're uh, in one word, when I ask you to give three words of your experience, your business, it is communication. It is advertising, it's, it's a product, right? You communicate. Whether it's a television news channel, communicate. If it's an entertainment, communicate. In the communication business, now you are talking a lot about the advertising industries opportunities. In television, I have seen this and I've seen uh, since when I visited Fox News and CNN and all that, large amount of people who are doing journalism per se, presenter or not the technical type of thing, right? Presenter or a writer, news writer, news director, subdirector, correspondent, all were with legal back, like lawyers, right? Is there a necessity or is there an opening? Is there, I would say, is there a necessity for you or, or, or shall I say again, opening for lawyers to think of full-time career in media organizations like yours? Not your advertising, in media organization. Of course. You know... Uh, with the paper as well. Yeah. There are openings because inherently there are certain skills that they have mastered. Mm -hmm. Writing, presenting... Um, interviewing and also uh, safeguarding certain things, being very careful not to misrepresent. You know, there are certain skills that they have learned yeah. in their studying processes. So that will yeah. give them a certain discipline, right? Another example, leave media out. Today, yeah. lot, today politicians, mm -hmm. by and large, think mm -hmm. that they, they should do law, right? Mm. Why? The traditional day politicians were lawyers before they came in, no? No, now, so that they know how to break the law. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. In my opinion, today, yeah. they're studying law so that they know how to break the law. Yeah, okay. So, um, 
So you think uh, there's opportunities in media as well? Of course, uh, yeah, because, and, and, and because it will be very useful, mm. especially in, uh, say, a media company, not a communication company, advertising, so, uh, to, uh, so to speak, but a media company like Derana. Mm. Yeah. And say, if you want to get into news reporting, Correct. a law background would be very useful. Actually, there are many lawyers. You have, do you, you have one or two, but do you have majority lawyers there? Not majority, no, majority. really not majority, because I think it's all to do with self-sustenance and independence, financial independence, because somebody who has studied law, I think, feels that they can practice and then they yeah. can get a career out of it. And, you know, they, their remuneration is better. Yeah, let so, me bring the other question on that, emanating from what you say. Yes, a lot of, we see a lot of people who are lawyers who are doing media always part-time. If you look at the landscape of Sri Lanka television, uh, private television and radio in the last 30 years, so 25, 27 years, most, there are lawyers, like you said, but they are part-timers and they are doing law uh, the daytime. This is like a nighttime job. Uh, more often than not, the argument would be, this doesn't pay as much as law. But when I saw people working in CNN and Fox News and companies, they are paid sometimes maybe a bigger salary than a lawyer could always get in the US. Uh, is it the same presently in your organizations as well? No, or... it, it depends, uh, Chanakke. Now, see, if you take okay, CNN or even Sri Lanka, there are, there are these uh, communication or media channels create personalities. Mm. Right? They become the face of those channels. Mm. Then, of course, they are, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the amount that they can command or their worth yeah. is that much more because they are stars. Yes. Right? They, so, I mean, so in other words, it's reverse back to what you be, in the beginning said. Can you the believe they, are, they, the they, are, they have about a million subscribers following them. Every opinion of theirs counts. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not only money, right? It's the, you know, reputation, the recognition, you know, that social acceptance which they get when they are in a media company, it depends which task and how well they perform that task. Okay. You also mentioned about in the beginning that you can have your own like cookery or even, even baking cookies or whatever thing. Now, you also know as a communication person, the social media is a very big thing. And you know, we don't need to mention name. There are, I think, about two major uh, people, not during the pandemic, even before. Within about three, four years, they managed to have their own cooking side. They are not doing anything new. They are doing the same cooking, but they are presenting it. And there are about three, four million uh, viewers, right. subscribers. Yeah. And so they make money out of that. So my broad question is social media or the, the, the correct word is new media. Is it something that through new media made the teaching or, or some business uh, something? Is it an area that is open for law graduates? They should try it out? Or is it not something anybody can succeed? What is your view as a communicator? Oh, I mean, a, new yeah, media, first. new media is important. It's vital. Mm. It's a necessary evil in my mm. mind. Of course, mm. I'm from the Why uh, is evil? because if you use it for the wrong reason, Probably. it is absolutely evil because you don't know. You can be a different personality. You can take on a completely like an avatar. Mm. And then represent to be somebody else. It's a very, very dangerous medium in the wrong hands. Right. But if you use it for the right reason, I, as you said, for education, um, you know, for helping people, for entertainment and communication, for connectivity, you know, uh, that kind of networking is fine. But for the wrong, see, today's generation, if you take by and large, their human interaction is minimizing daily, right? They are interacting with devices. Yeah. So if that is not used for the right reason, it actually makes them retards and, and brainwashes them into making them uh, you know, almost robotic. So that is why it, it is very dangerous. My advice to the young people, say the, law, the budding lawyers or the legal fraternity, use the social medium, right? or the digital media, use it to your advantage. Use it most importantly to learn what the world is doing. Learn your subject. You can get so much of knowledge for kids who are not proficient in the language of English. Use this to um, you know, improve yourself. But 
just don't waste your life away playing meaningless games or you know hanging on uh, instagram tiktoks or uh, snap times or whatever else you know it can be a, a break in your life you know just to have but if you are addicted to that that's darn dangerous i know in our time it was playing in the neighborhood we had books then we watched videos restricted tv based on parents and the rest of the time we were interacting so playing in the neighborhood like there was a documentary which says you don't see in your neighborhood kids playing anymore no nobody's in the neighborhood right okay that my question really is that. that is yeah. that is actually something that i i regret because we can't blame the kids also because yeah. that's the environment yeah. and you and know lawyers who are coming out who are the millennials probably or just before the millennials uh yes they would work maybe in a company or maybe work um, as a law practitioner or, or integrated in a business institution what else would you want them to have now yeah, every, very very rare it's very difficult sometimes to drive into uh, them that uh, don't get stuck in devices but mm-hmm. what would be your advice uh, how they can get out of this device other than they are other than when they are working how can can they manage? is it is it gymming or is it getting in sports or is it, how do how can they do that definitely definitely some kind of physical um, activity is a mm-hmm. must right i mean everybody needs to exercise their mind their mm-hmm. bodies mm-hmm. and also their souls so all those three things have to be exercised for you to be content but this is just preaching you no know? i mean you mm-hmm. can't force somebody to do that unless there is enjoying the can happen- you encourage to somebody like how would yeah. you encourage the youngest and people? also where where there is happiness happiness mm-hmm. for them to do that right so uh, there are different ways you can actually entice these kids most of the uh, parents you know what mm-hmm. they do no sooner they leave school mm-hmm. while they are going to universities or just before they go to universities now parents want them to work mm-hmm. there are many young kids who we have given internship to lot of our friends children lot of children or people who we don't even know they just come for 3 months to 6 months they experience an adult working environment you know what the advantage in that chanakya they meet so many people of different different walks of life yeah. they begin to see how so many problems these people grapple with problems day in and day out and still stay smiling they understand the value of money yeah right economic independence is taught in a very very practical way in that working environment so i mean i have seen this first hand kids who come from a very uh, kind of affluent background right parents drop them off in their luxury car and the uh, the parent uh, brings hot food all of that you find the kids slowly leaving that aside and sharing a bath packet you see them slowly getting into buses and going with the other people for you know whatever little gatherings that they are petty kade idan plenty ekak bona because first it is purely because they don't they don't want to uh, you know be alienated they join the crowd then later on they begin to like it with that comes the understanding that this is what life is so my advice is to the young people or the parents who are listening get them an internship doesn't matter which company you offer a lot of internship to young people yeah very all much. your companies yes mostly of course i have to be honest it's mostly in the advertising company chanakya because that's a fun place yeah. we can make it a fun environment for these young people fun and safe so you said i want to re- recap you said three things youngsters should do lawyers or otherwise now law young lawyers uh you said get an addition of course your skills your your work environment concentrate uh, sports and uh, what you said happiness that is spiritual and yeah, physical like, be, um, you know the rather. mindfulness you know the kind of uh, uh, make your soul happy yeah. you know it could be by reading it could be by watching a tree it could be meditating listening to music anything but just you know calm yourself switch off you know give it the time to chill is it actually possible in that young age in the 20s to do think of those things no it, it is possible they don't think about it hmm. 
Of course, it is possible. They don't think about it. We were actually Can suggesting. Can down in twenty? We were we were suggesting an advertising campaign, Chanakya, where the actual device goes blank, the oh. screen goes blank, and the brand doesn't advertise itself except saying, "Take a deep breath." Of course, a deep breath is connected to the solution what the brand offers, but there is no brand. But oxygen pressure. tank, no. <laughs> 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 no, the oxygen tank, or, or, or what are those institutions we were we were looking for uh, during the pandemic, Corona time? There was this uh, respiratory. Uh, anyway, so when you, if you ask again to sum up your advice to young lawyers who are coming up, uh, how would you say in these three areas? What would you and your companies and your colleagues offer? And that is, of course, you can say that you've been explaining very elaborately maybe you can retouch but what is there is the commercial world right is the commercial world other than the law practice because this is beyond court practice is it promising at the moment or will trying to uh, go into the commercial world will, will it will it um, you know lose you halfway through um, for that yeah what is what is your what is your advice um i think commercial i like to redefine it as entrepreneurship <laughs> I, yeah, I think it's good if somebody gives life to his or her entrepreneurial idea and whether they want to join a company to do that, whether they want to do their own startup and create something, it doesn't really matter. Another little bit of advice, Chanakya, I would like to give, especially the young girls. Today, sometimes they get a bit confused thinking career comes first and then family. Uh, but yes. My advice is for complete happiness, you have to balance both. I mean, in the legal field, if I just give two examples, the young people would already know them. If you take, say, Ayomi Alu Bihare Gunavata, right? She hates the serums. She's the head. Mm. But she's a mother of two. Or if I take my dear friend Chandani Dayaratna, who practices in Minwangur, she has a fantastic chamber. Mm. Mother of two, she's written a book. She does so. so it's about balancing, multitasking, and doing as much as you can and as many things as you can. So the young girls who are young uh, apprentices or yeah. attorneys shouldn't put uh, getting married, being parents, don't, should not delay that because yeah. of their career. You must be able to multitask. And yeah. then finally, that will give you the contentment. Multitask is your final keyword. Not the key, final. Final, I have one more final word. It yes. doesn't matter what you have studied, Chanakya. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. You have to be a good human being. Uh -huh. And more than anything else, you have to love this country. After all the studies, uh -huh. right? After all the achievements in whichever industry, Mm -hmm. At the first moment, if you want to pack up and leave this country, thinking the worst of this country, mm -hmm. then you're not worth your time. It's o'clock. Because you have got so much from this country, mm -hmm. right? And there's no country in, the, in this world which is as blessed as this country. So my final advice is to the young people. Mm -hmm. Say, and my point is, stay on. Mm -hmm. Have the staying power. This is the country, this is the land which can give you the best life, which is the best opportunities with contentment. There is no somebody is watching, huh? somebody watching can say, hmm. right? You were born, uh, you didn't go through what we went through. You got selected because probably you had high marks, that's why you went to law faculty, right? No, 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 no. I I I went to the law faculty the second time because some three people yeah. didn't come. Because they had gone somewhere else. That's how I went to the okay, law. Okay, I was so like an average you have all the money. Your kids have all the money. You have a business. Uh, all of, she doesn't know what she's talking. Uh, we all don't have. We can't have three meals a day. That sort of thinking might come even the students. Because yeah. I'll tell you this. I had another journalist friend of mine telling me, uh, uh, you're talking to people who come from rural area. One person who came from, uh, the, the, there are practicing or working lawyers in Colombo who's still boarded, right? And their boarding fees is sent by the parents. Mm -hmm. The parents means not religious, uh, real uh, people with uh, big wallowers and all that, but normal people. So, which means uh, they're not generating enough. 
right so even with law so there are there are people who are coming from outside so they might say we have greener pastures in other countries what what, what is he saying uh, we can make uh, and that's some kind of a truth also in that right you have a foreign llb or you have a llb uh, and then you can go and and the structure would be different so uh, is what you are saying not to stay on in this country is it for everyone or is it uh, is it not for everyone no, what i basically got to say for people who might op opine on your what you said what i just said of course there will be enough people to say look at it negatively no chanaka but i am only talking to the people who want to think of life positively oh. and my thinking is okay no amount of you look at the sri lankans living overseas yes they are doing very well but their heart is still in sri lanka so my point is before you take that step try your utmost here without starting off on a negative front just change the way you're thinking just try that and think okay from tomorrow i will try something new from tomorrow i will try to expand in this way from tomorrow uh, just try thinking positively as opposed to that normal negative way of looking at things even if if you are not happy with that then more certainly maybe you can you know this is not the place but by and large i think we have the brightest brightest minds in this country and this is a blessed land mm -hmm. and if the young blood leaves what is the future of our country so that's it uh basically you can uh by it overall it's all how you understand the surroundings and then your studies and think broadly creatively and make a decision as to where you want to head is that, is and, that and, and and also chanakya have the staying power because nothing will Say work the beginning, staying power yeah staying, staying, power. staying power yeah you said that as you started this interview would you like to elaborate and close the interview as to what you would mean by staying power yes when you start anything in life there are obstacles right mm -hmm. there are drawbacks mm -hmm. so if you give up without giving it the best chance then you will never know what success is you will never know that glory or you will never know that happiness but if you continue yes through the challenges you through all the obstacles it is yours to achieve that is finally your glory right it's your success nobody else can say they did it for you it is through your own self determination and your own own uh, courage that you have achieved all of this so i think it is important to have have a very very positive outlook chanakya good things are yet to come Arun Amrigam, thank you very much on that very positive note, positive and positivity and positiveness is the thread that went through this entire interview, and I'm sure that's uh, the thread that's woven you into what you are today, and you want to hand over that to the younger generation, especially lawyers who's watching this, or for any any other person. So, Arun, thank you very much for joining us, uh, and we wish you luck and success in everything, and uh, and and as you go. forward in all the industries and all the areas we have uh, you know more let's say fearlessly tread into and uh, so that was my guest today my guest today was varuni amnugama co-founder and joint md of triads and director of tv dirna and dirna media network as well as she is a director of uh, uh, george stewart uh, group uh, which and also uh, several other industries in food as well as lesha and uh, we want to thank you and i want i want you as well and we will join you again uh, in two days time that's on thursday at the same time is going to be my next guest another vibrant uh, guest thursday thursday's guest is going to be is also a not a stranger to you that's another lawyer dr rohan pallevatte dr rohan pallevatte is uh, as you would know was a presidential candidate in the 2019 elections as well he is known not for being in politics but as the person who invented uh, the uh, airbag trip with the least uh, amount of failure rate that 1 million 
uh, times. He will explain all that uh, when he uh, comes in. And Dr. Juan Palevat is also an uh, entrepreneur, inventor. He holds a uh, MBA and also a PhD uh, from a uh, university in United Kingdom. And there's a lot more going on his, um, on his uh, not a very easy uh, walk to his success. We will talk to him and get his input as to what he can teach the young lawyers, the law students who are watching this and whom this program uh, is meant for, uh, how, what he can share with, uh, share with them. So I'll join you again at uh, seven o'clock uh, Thursday, that's the day after tomorrow, 24th of uh, February, and uh, have a good night and uh, see you then. Good night.